I will always respect vintage red line packages. If I recall correctly, I got that package at a nice price, and it wasn't perfect anyways. Here you have an original Red Baron Red Line blister pack. It has all of the cars, the models in the back. Down here it says uh, 1969 Mattel Hawthorne, California 90250. These are how the original Red Line blister packs were provided. Now there, there's uh, variations in the packages. Here you have uh, Grand Prix series cards. Here's my red Chaparral 2G. I think it's 2G, right? Yeah, Chaparral 2G. Uh, that's in pretty good condition. I'll leave this one in the blister. Uh, it's nice to have a sample of this red line blister pack. This one's my son's, by the way. He purchased it himself, so it's from his collection. Now, you might, you might see uh, red lines in similar packages. I just want to talk about the packages real quick before I get to those packages. Well, these right here, look, they had... They had buttons in the past. This one has a button. Well, this has a peg hook. Peg hooks came later on. Not only that, it says 40th anniversary. On the back has a UPC barcode. They didn't have them back at the time. Yeah, copyright 2007. So this is a reissue. I'm pretty sure that there was a 25th anniversary. And I'm pretty sure Red Baron was in that set as well. Those had J hooks like this. Back uh, in the old days, there was a... Uh, a hole punch, and if you can see right here, it's got a hole punch. So you see this one right here? So is it uh, original? Well, you look on the back. Let's see, how can we tell if it's original or not? Well, it's got a copyright 1997 on the base. Oh, you can visit the HotWheels.com website. You know, there was a, you know the website was around in the late 60s, early 70s. So there's a look at some, oh, I'll, I'll talk about one more thing. When I zoom in, another reason why I'm glad to use the Red Baron as a sample talking about red lines. Well, first off, another thing you should know about the Red Baron, Baron, the early models, if you notice, let me move this so you can see. Right here, the very early models had this pokey poke on top. So, you know, parents complained, got tired of stepping on them. Eventually, they rounded the helmet, so this one, this one doesn't hurt at all. But this is the original red lines. I'll zoom in so you can see the difference. Here's the original red line. If you notice in the center, you can't see the axle. But if you look over here, you look right in the middle, you can see the axle. We have early red lines. The wheels, they actually pop onto the axle and you can pop them off. So that was a safety consideration because kids were swallowing. They take off the wheels and they'd be swallowing the wheels. Not only did they change the helmet to make it safer, well, they changed the wheels also to make those safer. They couldn't be swallowed. But I think another reason was because of uh, production issues. It was very expensive to put together those red line wheels. Modern wheels, like on the right, the wheels are popped onto the axle, and then the axle is popped into the chassis. So now I'm going to talk about this package here. Apparently, these were only available in Japan. You can see the Japanese writing on them. Here's the other side. Now, you know, I'm not exactly a big package fan. I open up all my stuff, and yeah, I even open up red lines, if I, especially if I want to use them for downhill racing. But I thought these would be fantastic to have in the collection. Somebody was selling them at the 2016 convention, so I picked up a few samples that made sense for my collection. And you thought that Matchbox were the only ones that were sold in these uh, little cardboard boxes. Well, apparently not. Apparently Hot Wheels had them as well. This model right here, Formula 5000, if you check out the red stripe wheels, it's after they change from the old red line types wheels. That's why we tend to call these red striped wheels. Because really, mm, how is collectors, these are, these are red lines. Yes, Mattel's going to call these red lines nowadays as well. But you know what? They're just red striped wheels. Here's a look at the top of the Formula 5000. I have another Formula 5000 to show you. I'll show you this one at the end. 
Let's go ahead and let you have a look at all the sides if, in case you'd like. And then I'll get the other ones out of the box. Metal base, metal body. Very cool model. And I picked this, of course, for uh, red, white, and blue for my red, white, and blue collection. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this model right here. This is, <laughs> what model do you think this would be? You look at that car, and what do you think it is? Well, I would have never guessed. It's called a Mercedes-Benz Mercedes -Benz C11. Once again, red striped wheels. This one's pretty cool because it has uh, opening features. Check out, it has gold wing doors. Pretty cool. You can see right inside there. The steering wheel must be on the other side. Let's go ahead and spin them around then. Here's a look at the tampos in the front. Oh yeah, another th cost saving measure that they did, they went to enamel paint. You can see how the paint here, it's uh, like modern day paint that you see on Hot Wheels models. Yeah, there's your steering wheel. So it's a uh, right, left hand drive and talking about the paint and th that's enamel paint. Whereas the original red line paint, it's called Spectra Flame. They highly polish the model itself, and then they put on Spectraflame paint, and it's kind of thin, so you kind of see the polished metal underneath, and that's why we like the original red lines, is because they have this uh, nice metallic look to them. Let's go ahead and give him a spin. I might have thought that this was related to the DeLorean or mm, Pantera. What's that? Is it Pantera? No, that's a band. Uh, what is that? Pan. Man, I forgot what that other car is. sounds like Pantera. Maybe it is Pantera. I'm not sure. There you go. Red stripe wheels once again. But for the last one, this is Inferno. I could have got a red stripe wheels version, but uh, they had one with red stripes, and then they had this one with regular. You know why I picked this one? Because it rolled better. And for me, it's important that the cars roll. But have you seen those front wheels before? They are pretty unique in Hot Wheels history. Uh, they used them for this model. I don't know if they used them for uh, any other castings. They did rename this casting and use it as a model called uh, Cool One. Yeah, they used it. Uh, it was the same casting, though. They just called it Cool One. But as far as those wheels, I don't know if they used it on another casting. They did rename this casting and use it for something else. But I don't know if they had any other release with those dragster type wheels in the front. Pretty small driver's compartment. It's very tiny. It's right there. I don't know if you've seen it when I show the engine. Very tiny. But, yeah, these are the three Japanese boxed uh, releases that I picked up at the convention. Got them for a little bit over $40 each. You can easily get these models for uh, less in a regular package or especially loose if it doesn't matter to you. But for me... Uh, I just kind of wanted something special for the collection, get a few Japanese box pieces, and these are the ones that I picked because they rolled well, paint's pretty good, and I have this one already in a, in a different color. This is my first sample of this, and I don't recall if I have this at all. As for the Formula 5000, that's a red stripe version. Here's a super chrome sample, and just regular basic wheels. Go ahead and put them on while I get other models ready. It's kind of shiny. It's going to be hard to see. Let's see. Did it get the same uh, decorations? Yeah, it got the same tampos. It didn't change anything. Just made it a super chrome. Came out uh, with other models. I'll show you another super chrome. How about a P911 Porsche? Now this one, this P911 Porsche, yeah, I did pick this up a long time ago. This one does have the red stripe wheels. Has a classic uh, decoration on top. There's a look at that. This is in a very good condition. Picked this up uh, uh, probably a long time ago. I don't know uh, how much I paid. Uh, as far as all this stuff, I really don't know how much is it, this stuff's worth. I just go to eBay and check to see what the uh, going prices are. Now, if you want, uh, if you want like uh, signature pieces from the uh, from this red stripe era. You're going to want to pick up an old 442 staff car. This one, this one's going to cost you some money. I don't know what they're going for nowadays. But it's actually a set of one of four cars. It was four military models. This is the old 442 staff car. 
most people just call it the staff car, but it's the uh, it's the old 442 casting. By the way, all the models I showed you so far, I think they had a metal. No, I take it back. Uh, this one has a this one has plastic base. This one had metal base. This one had metal base. Uh, the red one, the Mercedes, that has a plastic base. And this one has, looks like a metal base. So even though people don't like uh, plastic bases, there's been cars with plastic bases for a long time. Now, here's one that had a metal base. This here was one of the four cars that I talked about being part of a military ser series. This is, uh, it's, the casting is a 70s super van, but people are going to call it the, it's known as the military police van. As you can see, it's got the red stripe wheels. Not too bad a shape. It does, it does have some uh, play wear, just a little bit, but it would be very expensive to get one in mint condition. Uh, even though this one also has some flea bites as well. It costs you some money to get that one. How about another 70s super van? Let's go ahead and bring out the paramedic. It also, mine also has the red stripe wheels. So I got two nice samples of a 70s uh, super van. These are back in the, I guess they would be the 70s. Duh. I showed this one before in a previous video, Backwoods Bomb. There you have your uh, red stripe wheels. Not bad condition. Looks like it has just a little bit of scuffing on the uh, windshield, but I don't know if that would have been from the package or if that was play work, because I really don't see any chips in, chips in the paint at all. This next one is a signature Hot Wheels piece. You'll hear Larry Wood tell stories about it, the rambling record. He thought it'd be a great idea to, if you got a tow truck, well, you got to put a phone number on there because you want to get calls to get tow trucks, right? Well, he put his own home phone number on there, needless to say, he said he started getting cars. He started getting calls as soon as it hit the market. So if I'm going to get an autographed model, this is the one you take to Larry, get his autograph on there. Yeah, ask him about the phone number he put on the Ramblin' Record. He'll be glad to uh, share that story. So he learned a lesson after that. You don't, don't put no phone numbers on the cars. This one here, I'm pretty sure had a metal base, but let's take a look. Plastic base, sorry. It was the, uh, the 70s van that had a metal base. This had a plastic base. Plastic base or not, it's a signature Hot Wheel that you would love to have in your collection. And, and you can get it cheaper without the phone number. But if you have it on the phone, if you have the phone number on there, that one's gonna cost you a bit more. Here's another red stripe wheel. Very popular Hot Wheels piece, the uh, Poison Pinto plastic base. What plastic bake? Yeah, they've had plastic bakes for a long basis for a long time. So it's not a new cost cutting measure. It's the poison pinto. This is the uh, signature green color. I think it's in red. I don't remember if there's any other colors after that. And this last one, okay, I'll show you a metal base at the end. How about uh, Sir Rodney Roadster? That's another uh, classic Hot Wheel. I don't know how many people really like that casting. But uh, it's kind of cool. I think it's, it might be the only sample that I have in my collection because it's probably one, one of the more expensive ones to pick up. That was my recollection. I don't know if it's still popular or collectible today. But there you have the uh, Sir Rodney Roadster with the uh, red stripe wheels. I like it very much. Glad to have it in my collection. Do you have one in yours? So while I much rather have cars that are loose so that I could roll them around, because you also get you get to feel the die cast, you get to feel the weight, you get to learn the intricacies of the model. I do like to have uh, some packaged versions as well, because that's a bit of Hot Wheels history, right? Thank you for watching. Bye bye.